Hey everyone, welcome to our third and last video in our series on the reactions of chapter 14. Uh, this video is going to be very, very, very quick. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about this, but uh, I just I just want to have it mentioned just so that way you kind of have it in your mind if you do end up seeing it. And uh, it's going to be protecting, deep, protecting and deprotecting ethers with silyl ethers. Okay, so uh, So this is about silyl ethers, specifically silyl ethers as protecting groups. Okay, so uh, what does this mean? Well, uh, what we want to do is kind of talk about talk about the way that we should think about this. Okay, so um, if I'm doing some kind of reaction, right, where I want to do SN2 with something that has an alcohol on it, right? So let me think of a good example here. So I would say something like this, right? So if we have this, okay. And what I want to do is I want to do SN2 on this CL. So let's say, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's say I want to add an OH over there, right? So NaOH, okay. So what I want to do is I want to take this and make that, but this is not gonna work, okay? This is not gonna happen, all right? So why is that? Well, because NaOH is gonna deprotonate this, right? So NaOH, this followed by NaOH is going to give me this. So that gives me this, and then this can attack itself. And then it goes there, chlorine leaves. And then we've seen this before, right, with Williamson ether synthesis. So then I form this four-membered cyclic ether. This isn't super stable, so like this isn't going to happen a lot, but uh, this is what I'm trying to get across, right? So if I have something that has an alcohol in it and a alkyl halide, and then I'm trying to add a base in to uh, get that alkyl halide off, uh, the alcohol is going to cause a problem for me, right? The alcohol is going to cause a problem. So I have to find some way to work around this, right? This is this is a bit of a niche problem. That's why I'm not going to talk about this for too long. But uh, I again, I do think that it is important to know how to protect these OH groups. So the way we do this is with silyl ethers. Okay, so we can protect things with silyl ethers. So if I want to have say this OH and this Cl on here, right? What I can do is add in uh, reagents that will give me my silyl ether. So I can add in something called TBS-CL. And then it's usually in uh, imidazole with DMF, okay? So if I do this, then what happens is this OH, this, this is kind of like, uh, the video that we had on sulfonate esters as well. This turns into an O TBS. Okay, which this is my silyl ether now. Okay, and now I can do my reaction. Okay, so now I can put in NaOH or whatever, and then that's going to replace that CO with an OH. So I still have OTBS on here. And the way that I get rid of OTBS is I put in tertiary butyl, connect to a nitrogen with fluorine in THF. Okay. HF will also do the trick. Okay. So if I want to add in uh, hydrofluoric acid, that will also work. Okay. But either way, now that just gets rid of OTBS and replaces it with an OH. 
So now I've made uh, what I was looking to make, right? So uh, TBS stands for tertiary butyl chlorodimethylsilane, okay? And then uh, this, this here is uh, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride, okay? But so the TBSCL uh, looks like this, so. So we have a silicon with two methyls, a chlorine, and uh, a tertiary butyl group. Okay. So this right here is TBSCL. So uh, tert-butyl chloro dimethylsilane. Okay. So this is what we add here, and it makes this. Uh, silyl ether and then that's not reactive at all so then we can uh, put this through with the reaction and then if we put in uh, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride here then that does a good job of getting rid of it okay again uh, I could also use I could also use HF here right so I could use uh, I could use this reagent or I could use HF either way it's going to get rid of that okay so like I said, I, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we can do with this, but I think that it's going to be the use for this is going to be pretty limited for us. But just know that if I do have something that looks like this and I'm trying to put it through a multi step synthesis problem, then uh, I'm going to need to add something to protect this OH if I want to make sure that the OH uh, doesn't react like this, right? So if I'm putting in something basic like this NaOH, then I want to make sure that this alcohol doesn't cause me a problem later down the line, okay? So in this case, the uh, TBSCL prevents that from happening, okay? So protection, deprotection, uh, that's, that's kind of it. So that concludes uh, chapter 14. So all we have left to do just one more chapter left. All we have left to do is chapter 19, right? So we're going to talk about the reactions of uh, chapter 19, which is amines next. So uh, thank you for joining me for this, and hopefully you'll join me from chapter 19, and I will see you next time.